One of the reasons why I came to the island was to experience life in its, in its rawest form. But I also would say I, I followed some inner calling to get back to nature, um, out of a city, out of a job routine and everything. And the more time I spent here, the more secure I got that this is absolutely the right thing for me to do. I spent quite a bit of my spare time in tents before, part of a scout organization, which I have been part of since I'm seven years old, I think, also in leadership and organizing uh, camps and everything. And it was quite often that it, at the end of a camp, when after two weeks in a tent, you would sit at the campfire at the last evening and you would talk with the friends and you would say, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a lifestyle like this for a whole year or for the whole life in general? And I thought, if I don't do it now, I will never do it. And yeah, that's how I ended up here. I have been living in a tent since November 2018 and the first half year I've been living next to a, a building in a forest somewhere and since May 2019 I am on the island now. So the, the idea was to, to take away all, all things that we as humans created for our comfort but also on a on a social level to, to see how it feels to really be alone for some time. In the beginning I just had the, the basic things and all my stuff in, in different places in the tent. But throughout the year I built more items, I built a, a, a bed, a table, shelves. Now I have a couch as well. And, and all these things have a purpose and I have it there for a specific reason. And, and every small change changed quite a lot in my lifestyle, in my daily routine. I know how beautiful it is to have a bucket of hot water to wash yourself with. And the same, how beautiful it is to have a friend somewhere. And when you talk to that friend an hour or two, it's something special. And these emotions and, and, and everything else, every thought, is just more intense out here. Welcome to my home. It has changed quite a bit since I moved in here uh, one year ago. One change I recently did, which uh, was a major improvement, was here in the middle. There used to be one center pole that holds up uh, the tent. Uh, since this, this is kind of the only space where you can stand upright, I thought I make this tripod uh, that holds up the tent basically now and empties the space in the middle. And in combination with this I also made a change to the chimney pipe. I, I took this flexible aluminium thing here so that I can move the stove around and have more space, especially in summer when I don't need a stove. As often I can just push it somewhere to the side and I can stand here in the middle and walk around, which is really great, I have to say. One more thing that's very important in a tent, I figured out, especially when you are out in winter and in fall when it's raining a lot, that you need uh, something to, to dry and, and with the stove it's quite comfortable and things also dry overnight up here. It gets quite warm up there. When you spend the whole year camping I can recommend uh, getting a proper mattress, not one of these camping mattresses because they will lose air after some time. So I have a normal uh, foam mattress here and then the most important part for sleeping outside in winter, reindeer skin. That's the, the warmest uh, thing you can get. Then I have a down sleeping bag, well this is not my winter sleeping bag, I have a winter sleeping bag for up to minus 30 degrees. The coldest during this year was minus 10 I think. I use a um, cotton inlay and then also a, a blanket I use inside the sleeping bag just to regulate the temperature more, more easily. And the bed of course also serves as a storage space underneath. The couch is probably the most life-changing thing in here. Uh, before I had the couch I used this uh, boulder uh, crash pad on the floor as a cushion to, to sit on. This is also very interesting light improvisation by the way. You can use 
over at the bed or here on the couch. The main thing in the tent here is the stove. That's really necessary. The stove is made as a stove for tents. You can carry it around, you can dismantle it quite easily. And what I really like about this stove is that it has three big glass windows. So you don't only get the heat, but you get the light and the feeling of the fire. The tent has no insulation, basically. So when there is no fire inside, it gets cold quite fast. And in the mornings, it always has the temperature as it has outside as well. So I don't get up during night to reload the stove. I prefer to sleep. <laughs> and with the proper sleeping bags, I've had no problem. When you talk about the weather, because humans like <laughs> to talk about weather, it definitely has an influence. For example, now today, in this very windless day, it's quite unique. I haven't experienced this in the last weeks or months. Whenever there is wind, I have a hard time sleeping because it's loud in the tent. Uh, when there is rain, you hear it. When it's, when it's cold, you have to behave differently. It it's dictates what you can do outside. So everything I do is depending on the weather. There have been some, some rough times, especially November, December. It was quite dark, it was rainy, wet, stormy, a lot of wind. Also days where I basically just went out to pee and spent the rest of the day in the, in the tent trying to, to distract myself. But I never had the thought of, of leaving. Sometimes, even if it's just one day where there's no wind, where it's calm, and, and maybe even if you have the sun then as well, or a starry night, just makes up for, for all the hardship. One of the most asked questions, what are you doing in winter when the lake starts to freeze, but it's not thick enough yet the ice to walk on. This winter it uh, didn't freeze uh, that I could walk on it. So when it froze only a little bit, it was still okay to break through with the canoe. So there were some days where it was freezing, where I had a channel that was open, uh, where I paddled once a day to keep it open. But in this warm winter, I think the longest time when there was ice on the lake continuously was three, four days. Then it melted again, then it froze again, melted again, so it was it was not a proper winter. It was a little bit of a, of a disappointment, <laughs> because I really like winter, and I, re I really would have liked uh, to be able to just uh, step out of the tent and walk on the flat surface of the lake. To get to the mainland, I uh, used the canoe, I paddle around the island, maybe 10, 15 minutes, uh, depending on the wind and waves. And then I walk another 15 to 20 minutes through the forest and there I have the car. I'm not living self-sufficient here, so I buy food. I go to the next city once a week, twice a week sometimes, and, and buy uh, groceries there. Uh, on these trips I also I have two uh, water canisters that I, I fill up for just, uh, just for the drinking water uh, because it tastes better than the water from the lake. Uh, whenever I go shopping in the cities, I have contact with people. Uh, but also I have quite a few people around the lake here that I got to know where I can just uh, stop by for a cup of tea or something. But in general it is lonely here on the island. It's something I was aware of, that it will be like this. Uh, it's something I don't enjoy, I also have to say. But that's just uh, the, the trade-off the opposite side of this beautiful life here. But humans are made to be social beings, so I don't think it's healthy to live like this for too long. Here we have the kitchen with a solid stone plate. It, it was quite heavy to get here. I got it from the shore of the lake uh, quite a bit away. The base of the table is just these um, wood planks that are also used for the bed and the shelf. To prepare food I have a multi-fuel stove here. Uh, during the winter I was mainly using the, the wood stove because I had a fire going basically the whole time I was in the tent anyway. But uh, during summer and now in spring I, I noticed it already. It's uh, better to use the fuel stove to cook um, 
because with the wood stove it would just get too hot in here. It's a little bit tricky because you shouldn't use those in the tent because you have quite high of flame uh, when you start it and you can make mistakes that you get a real big flame so you need to know what you're doing with these. In general when you make a fire in the tent or have a stove in the tent you need to be very careful because for of the ventilation that you don't burn all the oxygen inside the tent that you need to, uh, to breathe. So that's something you need to be careful with when you make fire in the tent. Underneath here I have basically all my food stored. I eat very simple things, very simple meals I have to say. I eat mostly twice a day also, one big meal in the morning and one big in the evening. I use a lot of canned uh, food. I have fresh vegetables, I, I go at least once a week to a shop somewhere. I stopped using oil because when you don't use oil the dishwashing is much easier. I'm, I'm a vegetarian since 10 years, maybe even longer. Always with the addition that, that I said I would eat what I fish or hunt myself. Now I have the lake here, I have two fishing rods but I haven't use them yet. I, I still need to figure out if I'm able to eat an animal if I don't need it. But maybe I should try that I know how to do it in case I really would need it one day. I don't have a proper fridge because the bigger problem than keeping things fresh in summer is in the winter to prevent things from freezing. So I made an improvisation. I took a plastic pipe, sealed it on, on, the, on the bottom mounted it to a stone and put put it in, in the lake and the idea was to put things in the tube and they would then have the temperature of the water down there. So if, if it freezes it would have 4 degrees down there. It was a very warm winter this year. I have used it, not often, I have used it, um, but the diameter is a bit small. So for next year I need to think of something similar but a bit more practical maybe. And and here in the in the front part of the tent there's just dirt area where I put the clothes, the shoes that I use outside. My trash I also have here. I go every once in a while I take it with me to the mainland and sort it there. Uh, this water I use um, just for, for drinking basically. For everything else, for, for cooking, I just use the water um, from the lake. So I use the lake for everything uh, basically. I try to, when I wash myself or when, when I wash clothes, that I don't put the water straight back into the lake but have it on the land so it gets filtered through the soil and I only use uh, biodegradable soap. One more thing here, temperature indoors and outdoors because the weather kind of dictates everything I'm doing here. So this here is kind of the, the workshop area of the tent where I have uh, some basic tools, uh, the safety equipment, fuel for the Stove, screws, uh, ropes, like all the things you need to improvise. So back here is the electrical department. Here the cable from the 150 watt solar panel is coming in to the charging controller. I have a old car battery connected, which is not as good anymore. I, I should uh, get a different one, especially in cold temperatures. In, in winter I had problems with it. I also have a 500 watt power inverter, which I use for the piano mainly and to charge the batteries for the, for the power drill. I also have a, a splitter for the 12 volt power outlets and from there I charge the different USB devices. When I was still living in Austria, I have been working in film and television industry for 10 years almost. And also the reason why I came to Sweden was because of a, a job opportunity in, in television. But then I, I quit and now I just make the videos for my YouTube channel that I want to do and not what someone else is telling me. So that's a nice addition to this whole year. I don't have a, a computer in the tent. I have uh, a computer for editing set up at a friend's place close to the lake where I go to, to edit uh, the, the videos and also have fast internet connection. My goal would be to have a laptop in the tent to be able to do some work in the evenings for just one, two hours that I don't have to always use a full day to go there. I do have internet 
connectivity here in the tent with the phone, it's enough to watch YouTube videos in the lowest resolution. <laughs> I also have a guitar and a piano in the tent. So I spent also some time uh, making music and I actually also started to uh, write songs here throughout the year about the experiences. My main motivation to move from Austria to Sweden in the first place uh, was to be able to experience nature in a different way. In Sweden and in Scandinavia in general you have this um, everyone's right, as you may translate it, uh, means that you're allowed to sleep anywhere in the forest for two nights. If you stay longer uh, you need to ask permission from the landowner. That's also what I did here. I asked the landowner if he's okay with it and he said as long as I don't cut down any trees he's fine with it. I have been living off my savings so now at the end of the year I'm also at the end of my savings and need to think about how to earn money again. The things I had to, to get for this year was basically just the tent and the stove or the tent with the extra additions to the tent maybe 1200 euros the stove uh, was I think 900 when you count in the other parts as well and actually all the other things I had already from before and throughout this year I haven't calculated it yet but I think it was between 200 and 300 euros per month that I spent and this was uh, mainly for food and for the car uh, those are the two expensive things however I also started to uh, repair the car myself and it saves a lot of money before that time I have been working as a freelancer mainly so I uh, paid my, my health insurance in advance already also for this year throughout the year I spent a couple of weeks not on the island here uh, twice I was sick for a week in November and January uh, then I went to a friend's place, I slept inside, I slept in a bed. Sometimes also when I made some trips a bit further away, I spent the night at other people's place. I might use the washing machine as well, I, I did this a couple of times. Uh, I, I don't have a set of rules that I have to follow. Yeah, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. It's just a different lifestyle and I like it. So the tent I have is called a Sibley Bell tent. Sibley was some guy in the military who invented this bell shape type of tent with a small side wall of the side. It's 5 meter in diameter. Uh, the height in the center is uh, 3 meters and the side walls are 60 centimeters. The entrance here is 170. The whole tent is sitting on a platform. It's built up in nine separate segments because I already built it with the intention of moving it at some point and if you would have one big platform uh, that would be quite difficult. You can unzip the side walls and uh, raise the side walls so you have some airflow and with this uh, tent model you also have a mesh side wall so you can have airflow through the side but you don't get any mosquitoes. In front of the tent I have a little tent fly here. The tent is made out of uh, cotton canvas so it is quite sturdy but I also got an additional um, plastic layer on top which has the same color as the, as the main tent. I have this tent set up now since November 2018 so it's been through two winters and the additional layer on top just protects the cotton canvas. One thing you lose uh, when you put a second layer on top is some airflow, some breathability. But the advantage is in winter is as well that uh, you trap some air in between. This manufacturer, it's called Canvas Camp, is from Belgium. Yeah, and one of the first things I built here on the island is this door. Because it was in September, I think. It was getting cooler in the evenings and I had to make a fire. And I couldn't leave the door open anymore in the evenings to, to look out. So it's a frame and a plexiglass door inside. And it's 
quite nice. So this is really a great, great improvement, I, ha I have to say. There's also a locking mechanism here. The location of the tent I chose mainly for the view of it and not so much because it's wise to put it here because that's the main wind direction coming here, uh, southwest. So when there are strong winds and there have been some, some storms uh, throughout the year, it blew straight into the entrance, which also resulted in um, this here being, being ripped straight through here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but I would, I would uh, choose the same spot again, because this view is just can't get any better. All around the platform I also have this um, plastic that's uh, preventing the wind from, from going through, so it maybe traps the, the warmth a little bit. And it also protects the, the wood that's underneath from uh, the, the rain and everything. When I had to transport uh, bigger things, and especially also in the beginning when I brought the platform for the tent, uh, I met some people here uh, who gave me a ride in their boat, or uh, a boat I could uh, borrow as well. So I brought quite a few things throughout the year with the motorboat. For the toilet I have a shovel and the forest, which is okay, you get, you get used to it. For washing I use the lake mainly with an additional bucket of hot water. In summer it's, it's okay to go in the lake to, to wash yourself, but in winter it is challenging a little bit. In the beginning when I came here I intentionally chose not to have many expectations but looking back I have to say I'm not disappointed. I learned a lot about living a lifestyle like this, living in a tent throughout the whole year. I learned a lot about myself. In general I'm a very patient person but I, I realized I need to learn more patience even. So I would say the most challenging part of this whole year was wind weather and loneliness but yeah when you have a day like this today blue sky almost no wind that's okay I can live with this I will be on the island probably until June this year and after this I will continue to live in a tent uh, but not on the island the plan at the moment is to build a raft put the tent on the raft and spend another year going around the lake, visiting different islands, different parts. And so with a raft I can go behind islands, uh, into some bays and something. So yeah, it's not 100% certain yet. I'm, I'm still looking for the floating water barrels. But once I got those, I'll do this. This lifestyle as I have it now here, I don't think it's for everyone. Um, you really need to love the outdoors and also like cold weather, so it's probably not for everyone to live throughout the whole year in a tent in Sweden, in the north here, but it also doesn't need to be an experience that everyone has to have. I, I think every day spent outdoors is a good day. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Yo-Yo's adventures on his YouTube channel at My Northern Story. Thanks for watching.